Caught my fiancé cheating with my dad when I came early from work, they then tried to turn my mom against me but they forgot I videoed them. I'm a 27-year-old guy engaged to my fiancé L, 26. My dad, B, is 52 and my mom, R, is 50. L and I met back during her freshman year in college. We lived in the same dorm, which is how we eventually crossed paths. Funny enough, we later discovered that we grew up just two towns apart. So when it was time to head home, I'd offer her a ride. The detour only added about 20 minutes, so it wasn't a big deal. After a few of these trips and hanging out more often on campus, we started dating. Both of us come from really tight-knit families, so we didn't waste any time telling them about each other. I'd met her parents several times when I dropped her off, but it was usually just casual greetings and quick chats. Fortunately, both our families hit it off right away, which only made things easier for us. I graduated a year ahead of her, so I moved back home when I landed a solid job with great pay. I'd visit her on campus whenever I could and when she came home, we'd always make time for each other. After she graduated, we moved in together since both our jobs were in the city near where we grew up. Elle also snagged a great paying job at her company. After about three years of living together, I proposed, and we've been in full-on wedding planning mode ever since. But now, here's where things get tricky. Looking back, there were red flags I flat out ignored, assuming my dad was just being overly friendly and trying to make my ex feel welcome in the family. For instance, He'd call her constantly, and if I was around, they'd just brush it off like they were discussing some upcoming family event or whatever. I remember one time when Elle was in the shower, and her phone rang. I saw it was my dad calling, so I picked up. As soon as he realized it was me, he sounded shocked and kinda pissed. When I asked what was up, he said he was just trying to chat with Elle about my mom's birthday, which was about a week away. The call ended pretty fast. Now, even as I'm writing this, I feel like an idiot for not catching on sooner. The day I found out was just like any other Thursday. Elle had the day off, so she made us both breakfast. Before I left for work, she kissed me and wished me a great day. Halfway through my drive, I realized I'd left some important papers at home that I needed for a meeting later that afternoon. I figured I'd just swing by during lunch to grab them, no big deal. Throughout the morning Elle texted me like usual, stuff about dinner plans, laundry, asking if I wanted her to hang it up, you know, typical everyday talk. I didn't think I needed to let her know I'd be coming home for lunch, so when the time came, I just headed home. When I pulled into the parking lot, I noticed a car that looked a lot like my dad's. But I brushed it off and parked, not giving it much thought. As I walked into the building and opened our apartment door, it was like something straight out of a cheesy movie, guy comes home early, catches his partner cheating. I saw a trail of clothes, both his and hers, leading straight to my bedroom. Then I heard muffled moans coming from inside. I just stood there, frozen. My mind was all over the place, furious, heartbroken, disgusted, but on the outside, I didn't move a muscle. I was like a statue, just standing in shock. I don't know how long I stood there, but eventually, I snapped out of it. My first instinct was to pull out my phone and start recording. I gathered up all their clothes from the floor and tossed them into the hallway outside the apartment. Then, still recording, I made my way to the bedroom. The door was wide open. I stood there for a minute, just filming, before I flicked the light on. They both jumped like they'd seen a ghost. And then I saw it, my father. In my bed. With her. After the initial shock wore off, my dad saw that I was filming and started to freak out, scrambling to cover himself with whatever he could find, yelling at me to stop recording. He grabbed a towel and wrapped it around himself, then started walking toward me. I warned him, if you don't back off, you're gonna regret it. But either he didn't believe me or didn't care. He reached for my phone, and that's when I lost it. I punched him right in the jaw, hard enough to make his head slam against the doorframe before he dropped to the floor unconscious. Elle screamed, and I pointed the camera at her. Worried about your hookup, huh? But nothing to say to your fiancé? I snarled. My dad came to after about a minute, and I just stared at them both. I only came back to grab something for work. I said, my voice cold. But if either of you are still here when I return, this video's going out to everyone you know. I stopped recording and looked straight at my dad, still groggy on the floor. You're dead to me. You're not my father anymore. You'd better get home and talk to mom cause I'm gonna be having a chat with her real soon. Then I walked out. I sat in my car for a while, trying to process everything, until one of my bosses called, asking where the hell I was. I told her I was heading back now, when I finally made it to her office to hand in the paperwork. I must have looked like a complete wreck because she immediately started asking what was wrong with me. I brushed it off, saying it was nothing and that I'd be fine, but she kept looking me up and down and suddenly noticed some blood on my collar. She jumped up, rushing toward me and said, you're bleeding. I glanced down and casually said, it's not mine, it's my dad's. She looked at me like I was speaking another language, totally confused. So I pulled out my phone and showed her the video. 
She watched the whole thing, every second. She knew well, had met her a few times, but had never met my father. She sat there in stunned silence for a bit, and then it finally clicked for her. Not only was my fiancé cheating on me, but she was doing it with my dad. She offered to help, suggested I take some time off, but I told her I couldn't go back to my apartment right now. I just needed a moment to get my head together and that I'd be fine for the meeting. I mentioned I had another shirt in my office to change into. The meeting went off without a hitch. I plastered a fake smile on my face and acted like everything was completely normal. Afterward, my boss came up to me, looking at me like I had some kind of superpower, and asked how the hell I pulled that off. I shrugged, told her I had no clue and headed back to my office. When I finally got home, it hit me. I was really alone for the first time in what felt like forever. Now I have no idea what to do. One thing's for sure though, I need to get the hell out of this apartment. I can't stand being here anymore, and there's absolutely no way I'm ever sleeping in that bed again. On top of everything else, I need to go get tested for STDs, and I'm pretty sure I broke something in my hand. Update. So, the day after I posted I tried to get into contact with my mother but none of my calls were connecting. I wanted to see if she would get lunch with me, and I'd tell her everything. After about a dozen tries, I decided to get into my car and go to my mother's house, she needed to know what happened as soon as possible even if talking about was going to make it hurt all over again. During the drive I thought about what I would say and how I would say it that made me start to panic. I had to pull over twice to throw up, it's not every day you have to tell your mom that her husband is screwing your fiancé. I pulled into the driveway and sat in my car for a moment to calm down and gather my thoughts. I was in my car for a few minutes when my mother threw her front door open, so I stepped out of my car. She started cursing at me saying how dare I come to her home after I hit my father for trying to break up a fight between L and I. She called me every name in the book and called me an abuser. She told me I needed to leave since L isn't ready to forgive me yet and that if she's smart she hopefully never will. Yes, apparently my father took L to my family's home and told my mom that L and I argued and when my father tried to spot it, I hit him. She continued on for a while until I finally snapped and said, Really mom? Because your husband is ducking my fiancé. That's why I hit him and if you can't take my word for it, I have a video, I'll send it to you but because my own mother can talk to me like this don't expect to see me again. I don't want to hear your apology when you finally figure out that you're just as shit of a mom as my piece of shit father. Her face dropped. She looked like what I must have looked like when I first walked into my apartment and caught them. I pulled out my phone and sent her the video. My mom took hers out and turned it on. She pulled up the video and watched up until the part where I turn on the light. She then put her phone down. She looked up at me. But I turned and went into my car. I backed out of her driveway. I looked at her before I took off and she was in tears. My heart felt for her but too much was said during that fight for me to pull back in and forgive her. When I got home, I started clearing everything out of my apartment that had to do with Elle or my family. I boxed all of Elle's things up and put them next to the front door. Legally this has been her place of residence so I can't technically kick her out. Her name isn't on the lease, also she's the type of person who shies away from conflict and if she returns other than to pick her things up, there will be plenty of conflict. Anything that had to do with my parents I boxed up and put into storage, like I said in my first post we were a very close family, but I've never had a problem cutting toxic people out of my life. I texted Elle's parents and told them calling off the engagement and told them she's been cheating on me. I thank them for everything they've done for me. Our relationship was still building but they were kind and supportive of me, so this just added more hurt to the mix. I finished by asking if they would come pick up all of her belongings. I haven't gotten a response from them yet but I'm hoping they come grab her things, so Elle doesn't have a reason to come back here. Update 2. After my last post, I decided to get the ball rolling on everything that needed to be done like getting tested, finding a therapist, moving, and of course buying a new bed. I started by calling my doctor's office telling them I needed to get tested and to refer me to a therapist. I had my first appointment with a therapist two weeks ago and we decided to continue once a week. I also got tested last week but it'll be another week or so. So until I get the results cross your fingers for me. I got in touch with a real estate agent friend of mine and he sent me a ton of listings and I decided on a refurbished cabin on the outskirts of my city. I finished moving two days ago. When I finished moving, I called Elle's parents. When they picked up, I told them I moved out and Elle has still yet to pick up her things and that the landlord will start showing the apartment in a few days. So someone better pick her things up before the landlord throws it out. That must have lit a fire under them because the next day my former landlord texted me thanking me for getting the apartment emptied out. No one knows where I live now other than the friend who set me up with this place. So I know L, or my parents won't be dropping by. The only thing that sucks about this place is I traded a 10 minute walk to work to a 45 minute drive. My phone has been blowing up with texts and calls from L, both my parents, and some of my friends, but I have no interest in talking to anyone other than my therapist. At work I've been a ghost. I go and get my work done and leave, 
On the rare occasion I have to talk to someone I put on my fake smile and pretend everything is okay. My boss from my previous post has been trying to check in on me more, but I don't really tell her anything either. I just tell her I appreciate it. But I'll be okay. Truth is, I don't know if I'll be okay. I get that time heals and all, but I feel like that's only relevant when you're dealing with one issue not when you lose who you thought were the three closest people in your life all at once. A huge part of me died and there's no chance of resuscitating it. The meetings with my therapist are going well, I suppose I've never done therapy before, so I have no reference on what good therapy is. We do get along alright, and she really seems genuine in wanting to help. The first session was us getting to know each other and delving into what brings me to her. Nothing in depth but me just telling her what happened in my own words. The second session we went a bit deeper, she asked me about the relationship I had with my parents. I told her up until now it was great, we talked often and always communicated well when something was wrong, and that I grew up in a great home but that all means nothing now. She asked why I cut my mother out of my life. I told her she said things to me I wouldn't say to someone I despised then told her there's no way she can come back from that. At the end of our last session I gave her the link to my page on here, so she can read more about how I feel and what's going on in my head. I feel like it's easier to type things out than it is to speak it. So if you're reading this high doc, for now, I'm still miserable I thought I'd be okay by now. Not necessarily happy but okay. I know some of is my own fault not communicating to my friends but when I think about responding to them it just seems so exhausting. I know they'll want to get together or come to my new place, but I just don't have the energy to be around them. Until I do, I'll work, go to my appointments and sit on my back deck sipping on some bottom shelf whiskey and try to enjoy this beautiful view. I haven't hunted since high school so maybe I'll take that up again now that I can hunt from my back porch. Update 3. In my last post I was doing things like getting tested for STDs and trying to restart my life. I'm happy to inform you all I'm clean and couldn't be more relieved. I am fully moved into my new place. When I told you all about my new place, I told you it was a refurbished cabin, well I might have been a little generous. It was refurbished almost 25-30 years ago so it was a bit dated. Well with all my newfound free time I decided to actually refurbish it and all that's left to do is paint the guest room I turned into an office. The only thing I didn't do myself was the electricity and plumbing because I have no clue how to do it and have zero interest in being shocked or putting my hand in a shit covered pipe. Doing all the work has been incredibly stress releasing and has helped me clear my head. I still see my therapist once a week to all those who suggested it you probably saved my life so thank you. Being able to vent, get my frustrations out, and get the advice I need has been better than anything in my life past or present. I'm still working at the same company. I've become more open with some of my co-workers that I'm closer with and my boss from my previous posts due to the advice from my therapist. Also due to her advice, I've reached out to my friends and have slowly been reintegrating into the group again. Now onto the update with what's been going on between my family and ex. I decided I was ready to have a talk with my mother so a little over a month ago I unblocked her on my phone and reach out. I called and almost instantly she picked up the phone, I could tell through the tone of her voice she was panicking. Eventually after reassuring it was me, I told her we should meet and talk she agreed and a day later we met at diner near her house. She was there before I was and when she seen me, she started quietly sobbing. When I sat, she apologized over and over again telling me she could only take their word because she never thought them getting together would ever happen. I told her while I appreciate her apology the things she said to me were despicable and something no mother should ever say to their child, and it showed me exactly what she thought of me. She cried harder and promised it's not true that when she was told I hit my father for no reason she was so angry and when I showed up to the house, she just let her anger take over. Not wanting to go back and forth with her I decided to move on I said speaking of that pause what have you decided to do with him? She told me they've been separated, she just kicked him out, since the day after I sent her the video and she immediately found a lawyer. Then we moved on to my ex she said that when I pulled away she went back into the house and threw them both out she was too disgusted to look at them. We talked for about an hour in total and before I left, I told her I was in a dark point of my life and because of the things she said to me I didn't have my mother when I needed her and because of that I don't know if I could have her in my life. I then told her I'm willing to work on my relationship with her, but it will be at my pace. She stopped me before I could leave and told me she has to tell me something important. I sat back down and she said Elle is pregnant. Elle apparently showed up to the house and told my mom. She said she didn't know if it's mine or my father's Elle asked if I had been in touch so she can let me know. Obviously, she hasn't so my mom just sent her on her way. 